Hi, welcome to Troubadour's videos. Today we're going to be checking out the GTX 295 Plus from EVGA. And here is the GeForce GTX 295 Plus from EVGA. So let's have a look inside this box and see exactly what accessories come with this beast of a card. Okay, with this particular card we have a quick install guide pouch which contains a KSD decal and a driver's CD. We have our quick start guide, a very basic install guide in the front pouch. We have a couple of power adapters. We have a video adapter and we have an audio connection cable. Let's have a look at the graphics card itself. And here it is. This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 295 Plus. It's in a matte black finish. It's a very tinny case. Unlike the 9800GX2, the bottom of the PCB or printed circuit board is actually exposed on this card. There's our SLI connector right here. So let's have a look at this particular card in more detail. We're going to bolt this into the computer run it through a couple of benchmark tests and see exactly how this new graphics card performs under benchmark conditions. Let's have a closer look at the GTX 295. Here we have our 6-pin and 8-pin power connection, our SPDIF audio connection and one of the biggest heatsink vents I've ever seen on a graphics card. Finally, here's our SLI connection point. So let's turn this card over and check out the metal case on the opposite side of the card. The immediate thing you notice is the natural venting system on the top of this case to leave all the heat out, as well as the matte black finish, which is similar to that you see on car exhaust manifolds. On the back of the card, we have our two DVI connections, HDMI, as well as another humongous vent to leave all that heat away from the card. Here's the GTX 295 mounted inside our PC on an X58 motherboard with a Core i7-965 CPU. We're going to be running all this at standard clock settings for the benchmark today. For the benchmarks today we're going to be running a variety of programs but I don't want to bore you guys with all the details and actually watching the video footage of the benchmarks. I'm sure you've seen these benchmarks multiple times so we're just going to jump in and give you guys the results. For the first benchmark we're going to be running Crisis with settings on 1920 by 1080 and all the quality settings to very high. For verification here you can see the 1920 by 1080 resolution, no anti-aliasing and all the settings turned to very high. So let's see exactly what results we can get with this single card running with two GPUs. Those are pretty impressive results for a single card with two GPUs, a minimum of 28.46, maximum of 48.56 and an overall average of 40.1 frames per second. On the Crisis Warhead benchmark we're going to set the mode to Enthusiast, display resolution to 1920 by 1200, no anti-aliasing and we're going to run three loops so let's see exactly what scores we can get. Well, once again, great frame rates, a minimum of 30 frames a second, maximum of 55, and an average of 41. And finally, let's check out 3D Mark Vantage. Now, what we've done, we have enabled PPU on this card, so we do have physics running right now, but the rest of the card is set to stock clock settings. Wow! 
23,067 3D Mark performance points off this card in stock clock settings with a Core i7 CPU on an X58 motherboard. That is an absolutely phenomenal score for one card. The GTX 295 is a phenomenal graphics card. The results we got from this dual GPU single card solution are absolutely amazing. During the benchmarks we saw no uh, evidence of former micro stutter so I finally think Nvidia have come with a dual GPU success. Fantastic stuff. I definitely think with some overclocking and tweaking this is going to be the card to beat. Once again, I'd like to thank you guys for posting comments and rating these videos, especially my subscribers. However, if you feel uh, you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in gaming hardware, feel free to subscribe.